To the right of the oil derrick flagpole, which stood in Gore Park from 1900 to 1922, are Victoria Hall and the McKay Building. Victoria Hall, located at 68 King Street East, was designed and built in 1887-8 by architect William Stewart for Alexander Bruce, a local barrister employed for many years by the Canadian Life Assurance Company. Victoria Hall is the only known example in the downtown of an applied galvanized iron metal facade which dates back to the 1880s. This building is one of three documented buildings in the country erected prior to 1890 with a full metal facade. Victoria Hall is the only one that was handcrafted. It is suspected that the facade of Victoria Hall was fabricated and erected by a local firm, either the galvanized iron works of Thomas Irwin and Sons or the roofing and sheet metal working firm of John E. Riddell. In 1952, Foster Fashions moved into the Victoria Hall building and a decade later took over the adjacent McKay building. Both structures fell under one name and from that time forward became known as the Foster Building. In March of 1969, they had a fire which destroyed the second floor alterations room. The McKay Building is a narrow four-story structure erected in 1914-20 and designed by Toronto architects Bond and Smith. The original owner was A.B. McKay, a prominent figure in the Great Lakes shipping business. The first tenant in the building was McClellan's Clothing Store. His name is inscribed on the parapet decoration. This building also has a noteworthy facade construction. It is made of glazed terracotta and ranks among the finest surviving examples in Hamilton of the decorative use of glazed terracotta. Both buildings later sat vacant for many years until they were renovated and restored to their original condition. John Weiner was born in New York State in 1800 and arrived in Hamilton in 1829. He opened his own drugstore on the northeast corner of King and John Streets, and when that building was destroyed by fire, he built his own building in the early 1860s on the south side of King Street between John and Houston. John Weiner died on August 1, 1887. Weiner Drugs continued on at the same location until 1910, when the Bank of Nova Scotia, for many years resident in the W.E. Sanford building, bought the Weiner building and demolished it, erecting a new bank building on the site and moving in there in 1914. In 1954, they moved to a building one block west, and the bank building went through a number of changes. In 1983, a disco nightclub called The 54 opened on the site. The following year, the name changed to Billy Rose Palace, an adult entertainment facility. In an article at the time, the owner called it a masterpiece of a building. It had 40-foot ceilings, winding stairs with brass railings, three separate levels, French provincial decor, and huge crystal chandeliers. Later, in the mid-1990s, it became the Embassy Club. The Hamilton Provident and Loan Society was established in June 1871. It combined the functions of a building society and a savings bank. They erected their own building at the southeast corner of King and Houston, which opened in 1881. It was four stories high with a frontage of 42 feet on King Street and 139 on Houston Street. The building had a steep French roof, a floor inlaid with mint and tiles, and walnut fittings richly carved with panels of cut glass. The most prominent features of the building were its two towers. The one closest to the corner of Houston also served as a clock tower. A unique feature of the building was a hydraulic water-powered elevator. In 1926, the company was sold to the Huron and Erie Corporation of London. It underwent a complete interior renovation in 1947. The company later bought the adjacent Gore building. In 1961, the decision was made to demolish Bowles buildings and replace them with a new $1 million building. After 80 years of banking service, the building was demolished in December of 1961. The new Canada Trust Huron and Erie building was officially opened on January 16, 1963. The newspaper reported that the ungainly structure of another time is gone 
and on its foundation sits the sleekly beautiful Canada Trust Huron and Erie building. A unique feature of this building was Hamilton's first underground parking area to accommodate 18 cars. Currently, the building sits vacant. A formal application for the creation of the Gore Bank was filed in November of 1833 by Joe Bloder and 36 other prominent citizens. Alan McNabb fully supported the application, which was eventually passed in 1835. The original building, which housed the downtown branch of the Gore Bank, was constructed in 1838 and stood across from Gore Park on the southwest corner of King and Houston Streets. The building was a two-story Renaissance Revival stone building with a Second Empire-style mansard roof added in the 1870s. The exterior exhibited a careful symmetry. The porch was designed with classical columns and a balustrade. October 26, 1869, the shareholders of the Canadian Bank of Commerce ratified a provisional agreement with the Gore Bank, and in May of 1870, the Act of Parliament confirming the amalgamation received royal assent. The Gore Bank was now part of the Canadian Bank of Commerce. The Canadian Bank of Commerce occupied the site until 1929, when the building was sold. The old Gore Bank building was demolished that same year to be replaced by the two-story Norwich Union building. This building contained many businesses over the years, including the ones in this photograph from the 1970s, Fashion Craft, Dr. Scholl's, Howard Williams, and the White Grill Restaurant. You can also see Caesar's Restaurant just on the right of the photograph. The Norwich Union Building was demolished in the summer of 1977 for the construction of the present-day 10-story banking building there now. The Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation Limited was established in 1865 and adopted their current brand and logo in 1998. The Minden Building, located at 18 to 22 King Street East, started as a warehouse. In the 1920s, Louis Minden and his wife Anna bought the building and moved their ready-to-wear business into it. Minden's of Hamilton was considered one of the top stores of its kind in Ontario. This limestone commercial building was one of the last of its design. Since 1952, the eastern portion of the building has been known as the Minden Building. The lower floor of the western portion was occupied by the Honeydew Restaurant from 1942 to 1971. The Honeydew was a very well-known restaurant in downtown Hamilton in its day. Robert Duncan and Company moved in after their building was expropriated for the construction of Jackson Square. The space was used as a book and stationery store. The buildings in this section of the block are currently vacant and have been boarded up, and the building that housed Caesar's Restaurant and Dinner Theatre has been demolished. The Bank of British North America opened its office at 12 King Street East in 1848, building on the site of a tavern and hotel owned by Bloomer Burley. There was originally a stone stairway that went from the street to the upper floors where the bank manager's apartment was located. This stairway was removed in 1873, leaving the only access to the apartment through the bank offices. The Bank of British North America was taken over by the Bank of Montreal in October of 1918, and they continued to occupy the building. For over 75 years, it served as a bank before being purchased by the Hamilton Hydro at a cost of $135,000. Since Hamilton Hydro had been formed in 1913, their offices had been in the basement of City Hall. After renovations, the official opening took place April 3, 1923, presided over by Sir Adam Beck. In late 1949, Hydro announced plans to build a modern new headquarters on the southwest corner of John and Rebecca Streets. Hydro vacated the building on April 1, 1951 to move to their new office building. The old building had been sold in 1950 for $287,500 to the Bank of Nova Scotia, who announced plans to demolish the building and construct a new modern bank on the site. The new Bank of Nova Scotia building opened on February 23, 1954. Old photographs show the original southeast corner of King and James Streets contained retail stores offering dry goods and other services. The Canada Life Assurance Company was formed on August 21, 1847 by Hugh Cossert Baker Sr. with a capital of £50,000. It was the first life insurance company in Canada. They issued their first policy on November 9, 1847, a life insurance policy for £500 on the founder of the firm. Their first offices were on King Street West, but in 1856 they opened their first building on James Street South, where the Pigott Building now stands. This building had previously been the officers' barracks, while the Prince Consort's own rifle brigade had been stationed there from 1862 to 1864. In 1882, they moved into a new building at the southeast corner of King and James Streets. The building became known as the Canada Life Assurance Building, or colloquially, as the Twisty Tower Building because of the unique design of the top tower. It was known as one of the finest public buildings in the continent. 
Oscar Wilde, who lectured in Hamilton May 30th and 31st, 1882, stated that it was one of the most beautiful buildings he had seen in Canada. This was in the context of his premise that commercial activity need not clash with the desire for the beautiful. The building flourished in this location until they sold the site in 1929 to Henry Burks and Sons. Burks had opened their first store in 1879, and this location was their first Hamilton store. Later that year, in November of 1929, the building suffered a fire. Burks was advised to tear it down and build a new modern building, but instead they made a decision to rebuild the damaged sections, including the twisty tower. They remodeled the tower and added a copper roof, a canopy, show windows, and completely remodeled the interior. They also ordered a copy of the charging horseman clock found at Wells Cathedral in Somerset, England. The 18-foot tall clock was set going at 10 o'clock in the morning on October 11, 1930. Burks flourished in Hamilton and became a destination. Many people made arrangements to meet under the clock after their downtown business was finished. Burks vacated the building and moved into Jackson Square in August of 1972. On September 1, 1972, it was announced that the old Burks building would be torn down to make room for a new 15-story, $3.5 million office tower. Picketing at the old building began at once, but to no avail, and the building was demolished. Construction began on the new high-rise office building that was to replace the iconic Burks building after demolition was complete. This is the current home of the First Ontario Credit Union. Fortunately, charging horseman clock was saved. It was reinstalled on a pillar outside Jackson Square, but ceased working very shortly afterwards. Later it was removed and completely restored and installed in the renovated Farmer's Market in Jackson Square. We have now arrived back at the corner of King and James Streets, and we take a look back down King Street East from the 1870s. The modern view is radically different, with the exception of Gore Park, which still stands in the center of the city as Hamilton's first park. And this concludes our walking tour of the buildings of the Gore.